okay good morning everyone so i hope you all have practiced uh, whatever things that we have learned so far so we have done one these few parts uh, one we have set up the apm client in our intellij we uh, wrote a lot of code uh, not a lot of code at least few lines of code we make sure uh, that the you know uh, app is getting launched in emulator as well as the physical device i hope you all have uh, rectified all the issues till now and then at least should be able to launch the app in the mobile device if not the emulator okay even if uh, the physical device you don't have a physical device you know something then we'll also have a way for that we'll you know see that in few minutes but before that we also need to find a new way to launch an app because not all the time we will have the apk file with us let's say you are you want to test an amazon app that is sitting in your inside your device you cannot have an uh, apk file right you directly download from the play store you don't have a apk file with you so it's not possible for you to give this okay where, where you know amazon.apk you don't have the file so how will you automate those things then in those cases you can also use something called as app package and app activity which i which i have mentioned here right so we're going to use that to launch the same app that we have used in the previous class so i also have my device here okay it is currently in the lock state that's okay but but we're going to launch it okay but for that we need to find what is an app package and app activity if you notice um let's say if you are building our java project what we normally do we create packages and then inside that we create the classes the same way the android developers they also use java or kotlin both of them are java based languages so even kotlin right uh, how many of you have heard about kotlin anyone knows kotlin any response Yes, um, uh, I have heard about it. Like, Kotlin uh, is used to build like uh, yeah. So you can you can uh, in the same project itself, I can have both the Java Java code as well as Kotlin code, and JVM can compile both of them, and then it can suppose I feel this Java code is very you know boilerplate. It is very verbose. It is having I have to write lot of lines. Then I can also use um, uh, Kotlin. for one class and i can also use java for another class okay so let's come back to the business so uh, kotlin is one of the tool to uh, you know they normally used to for uh, android development okay now uh, we have packages as well as classes right the same way okay they also have packages the classes they call it as activities you can imagine like that okay so we need to find an activity that actually launches the app okay so we need the app package and then the app activity because if you take a device there are so many apps in a device okay there are basically a lot of apps in the device so you need to launch all of them uh, not you cannot launch all of them uh, the apm server needs to identify this uniquely okay how to launch a new app so to do that only we are we are using the app package and the app activity so this will be unique for uh, all the apps uploaded to the play store okay Uh, the play store will do the check whether it is distinguished and then um, you know it will uh, allow allow people to upload it good once this is done now we have to find the app package and the app activity for the app for that first thing that you need to do is open your app uh, in the device okay so i have this app in my device i have already kept it in the open state now go to your common line interface i am using windows terminal that's absolutely fine okay and here just type for your uh, adb devices first make sure that the device is up and running and if you don't have an app installed in the device then you can run one command adb install and the path of this app okay path dot apk so give the entire path and then give the apk file so it will install it for you in the app okay you can use commands to also install the app okay you don't have to download them manually you can also use commands if if it is if the app is already installed then open this particular launch page that you want to launch okay and then type something adb shell now we have went into my mobile device now i am inside my mobile device see if you notice hw for huawei because i am using honor model so it's huawei so we are inside the device in your case this can show different thing based right. on your uh, phone mac manufacturer once this is done now you need to write one uh, simple command okay i don't memorize this i don't know even if you ask me i don't i cannot tell so just copy this command okay copy it and go to your uh, terminal paste it okay and make sure that you are having single quotes okay 
this this should be single quotes and even here it should be single quotes okay uh, because sometime when you uh, copy paste on the command line it will be uh, you know adding some uh, white, white white characters okay make sure those are all single quotes and then click on enter once you do that it will find the android package and the android activity for you okay so it means the this is the package so io.apm.android.apis this is the package see this is the package and this is the activity so they have given it in a very simple words this is the package and dot api demos is the activity so dot is very important if you don't give the dot uh, it may not work in some cloud providers so always give the dot which indicates it is relative to the package okay the full path of this particular uh, class file you can imagine like that okay okay so it's a very very simple task now we have found it now we need to add it in our code okay now first let's comment this out okay we have commented our code and now we need to add this particular capability so let's try um, capabilities dot set capability and let me try it in the mobile capability type okay let's type dot let me search for app package okay it's not available it is not listing many options so what is happening okay guys now we need to have a little understanding about what is mobile capability type so mobile capability type is something that is common for both mobile capability type okay is common for both of your uh, android and ios okay so whatever the things that you see the app dot app mobile capability dot app you can also give the path to your ipa file okay it is common for both the android as well as ios here in the automation name you can give xcui test platform name you can give uh, ios device name you can give my iphone 10 something like that so whatever the things that are common to android and ios will be in the mobile capability type but in our case this is very specific to android because uh, ios don't have app packages and app activities and all so what we need to do there is something called as android uh, android mobile capability type okay and then click on that now if you notice there is something called as app activity and there will be also app package okay here i need to give the app package so what is the app package we need to copy it from here okay till this copying this is always a, okay let me type it um io dot android dot sorry apm apis okay so this is your uh, app package now the same thing you can copy paste and then here you can replace this with app underscore activity okay and then here you can type dot a guys don't make any spelling mistake okay demos okay now let's try to launch the app this time we are not using the app and then we are just using app package and app activity okay this can be used if your app is already installed and you don't need any updated version of the app okay this will not install the app for you it will only launch the app okay that is the very important difference between your app and the app package and app activity okay let's i have my uh, server up and running as well i have my device uh, open so let me go to the home screen and then let's try to run this test this time it won't try to you know install the app that's the only difference okay now the next question will be can i use suppose if i want to also install the app then you can also give this okay that it doesn't make any harm so it will use your android specific capabilities to launch the app and then before that it will also try to do the installation if it is not updated okay it will also work um but 
but from the first line itself like it tries to launch also right so no, isn't no it will only launch in this particular line 34th line okay it will we are only adding the capabilities it in this time okay it doesn't even know okay uh, which uh, you know which hub it needs to call so it will only launch the stuff here okay right right but without app package and app activity also it was launching right yeah it it will launch that's what i'm telling these are like uh, very specific capabilities you can use when you are when you are not passing this app activity okay mm -hmm. suppose let's say in browser stack that we are going to see in the uh, you know in a few minutes if, even though you give the app okay even though you give the app it won't use that to call okay it will use the app package and app activity to call it okay yes so, okay so it, it it just that how it behaves okay so just understand either you can use app or you can use these two okay that's pretty okay. simple okay don't complicate too much now we have now worked with android devices physical android devices and the emulators now we also try to connect to some uh, devices in the cloud okay guys there, there is a reason behind why i am not going in depth uh, you know driver dot find element doing all the stuff because that can be very very easy process now understand what are all the things that the apm can do that is very important once you understand the uh, full use of it you can leverage a lot of things suppose uh, you might feel lazy to connect to a real device or your you know kicking start your emulator in those cases you can use browser stack easily for practice also it will be very efficient for you so that's why i am trying to cover a browser stack about this uh, you know in this particular video so we going to see what is uh, you know little overview about boss stack we going to see how we can upload the app how we can run the test how we can see the reports how we can see the logs apm logs in the boss stack all these things will be covered now so let's go to boss stack okay if you notice i have already logged in okay if you are if you have not logged in or signed up please do sign up okay they have uh, free plans which where you can use one hour of uh, uh, you know uh, device you can you can rent a device for one hour for free okay every day one hour that is more than enough right that's that's the maximum amount we spend in learning okay so so we will use that uh, in order to practice okay so this is a very simple browser um, stack website they are they are one of the top leading uh, cloud providers available okay so why there is a need for uh, cloud providers like uh, browser stack cetus precode anyone wants to give a try why there is a need anyone want to try why when we can work with physical devices when we when we can work with emulators why there is a need for browser stack uh, this is not... for uh, multiple devices we can execute parallelly okay that is one thing uh, mm. like uh, we have multiple devices right one have small screen one have large screen one the version is different in another Which... uh, there is version is different so we can run in parallelly our apps and we can test it okay Which... another, another thing is uh, instead of setting up the infrastructure by ourselves we can rely on the third party cloud provider like this mm -hmm. so that uh, they can take care of the environment so that i we can run our test seamlessly cool what else what else anyone wants to try what else i think both of them have covered almost all the points anyone wants to you know think about anything else okay so if you can understand okay that thing that's absolutely fine okay so basically uh, you know like they mentioned if uh, you know if i run a very small company uh, you know i need to test it in all the devices let like there are almost you know uh, 200 devices in uh, android devices available in the market ranging from different screen sizes different resolutions you know uh, what else what different android running on different android versions testing on all of them you know will will cost definitely a bomb okay so what people normally does they don't want to set up all these things okay i can create a emulator for all of them but you know i need to maintain the infrastructure that is again a different difficult task right you need to have a power supply all the time you need to someone to manage all the stuff okay if the if the device uh, got disconnected or having some problems you need to make sure that you get it connected you know make it accessible all the time right so you need to provide the security when you want to connect it through, through remotely suppose let's say you have a team in us and uh, and in chennai okay the cloud is now set up in us 
okay you want to access this from chennai you need to provide uh, you know certain accesses right you need to maintain them you need to maintain the user accesses a lot of lot of stuff are there so instead of doing all that we we can go for some cloud providers like this again guys it, it is more robust if you use a cloud providers otherwise even still we can work with our real devices okay good uh let's say uh it has four important columns okay that i want to cover one is your live so if you notice this is this particular tab okay is for if you want to do some uh you know browsers testing or you know all, all those stuff okay let's say i want to launch this on particular machine you know uh, windows 10 i want to test on 91 edge version i can do that all those stuff i can do that okay so this is for selenium browser testing manual testing okay there their uh, automate is for selenium automation testing okay very very simple difference live is just for manual testing app live is for automation so if you notice we go here they'll give you code okay suppose i want my test to run on 10 and 88 version of the chrome uh, hey use this desired capabilities add it in your desired capabilities and then use it in the code that's what they are telling but we are not interested in this now okay now let's go to app live which means app means mobile app so if you want to test your mobile app manually they are giving 26 minutes of free trial okay but previously they used to give just uh, you know one minute now they are increased the time limits to 26 minutes and then you can also try their free devices they are giving both android and as well as ios previously they used to give only android okay now coming back to app, app automate is this for a uh, uh, native app automation okay mobile application automation so now we are interested in this now they are giving one hour of free. so if you notice you are on an app automate free plan and only have 100 minutes of testing left in a day okay previously it was just 60 minutes they have now increased this as well to 100 minutes so you can basically do uh, you know one and a half hours of automation using their device that's pretty cool right and uh, now let's go here they are telling hey have your AP java client ready that is your first step okay we already have that ready buddy we don't, don't worry about it and then second step hey you are you want to test some app okay what app you want to test okay uh, either you can browse the app and give it to them or you can uh, you know send it to form of a curl request uh, or they also have a sample app with them okay you can also use their app to test it uh, anything is fine they are telling okay but in our case we want to work with android apps uh, so let's go to the downloads and then choose the app and then click on okay now the app is getting uploaded to their particular cloud okay now it is got uploaded and your desired capability section is getting updated here see your app url so they are telling hey use cap start set capability and uh, app as your uh, key and value as this okay we will take care of the rest that's what they are telling okay we'll do that that's an easy deal for me and then uh, they are telling configure your test script so okay so to configure the test script first they are telling using the same capabilities you need to mention the uh, who is the user because we need to give them the access right uh, okay not everyone will get the access you need to sign up you will be given a username you will be given an access key set up this okay hey Amudan, how can i find this either you can get it here this is your uh, uh, key or value or you can go to the top of the page and here um, there will be an option to get your, your value so if you notice there is access key you can get copy it from here this is your username this is your password okay so once this is also set they are telling uh, the the step what we have done before the app key type of app and then you need to use this app ability they are also adding that <clears throat> on which app you want to test and then they also want to specify which device and OS you want to test so they have basically only one that is android and then they are having only two devices either you can use samsung galaxy s10e or samsung pixel 3 both of them are android versions 9 for our free testing we don't have to bother about it we can use any of them okay so if you change this it will also change you the uh, code here so if you notice it got updated to samsung galaxy s10e okay so uh, that's how cool they have developed and then they also setting you can also set other these are all not mandatory but you can also set other browser stack capabilities like what is the project that you are working what is the build name that you want to do and what is the test name that is very important right so let's say <clears throat> you are working for a company like uh, cognizant 
okay they have purchased some browser stack license so they need to distinguish among different projects right so you can pass this project okay my project name is abcd and what is the build okay this is for uh, my uh, uh, june uh, june sprint 15 okay and then what is the name of this particular test login test okay so basically you can set all these capabilities in order to see the results and then they are also telling use this hub okay instead of whatever you are using so we are using um, http local host 4723 uh, and then the hub now the same apm server they have configured in their location and then the local host ip address right they have converted into a dns that's it very simple okay you can also set up a hub like process tag that's very easy process okay only thing is you just need to configure a dns for your ip that's it and then you need to <coughs> give access for anyone who can access it so it's a pretty simple process they have done we're going to use that okay and then you can write your own custom code and then you can quit your driver so they are telling always quit invoke quit if your test is closing okay as simple as that very easy right so we'll try to do this and then try to call okay uh, let's say uh, what i'm gonna do let me create a new class and uh, also stack test okay and then here Okay, I'm gonna run the test in browser stack and I'm gonna annotate with that test. Good. So now let me copy some piece of code that I want to do already. Okay. So this is the piece of code that I want to do. I'll copy it. I also take this as well. And then paste it. Okay, maybe I'll use RTA. Okay. Okay, this is a piece of code that we have now, right? So, uh, what are all things that I don't need? Okay, I think I don't need this one. Okay, let me remove it completely. And then they are also not setting up, uh, you know, this is also needed. UA Automator 2 is okay because they will also be using UA Automator 2. So, it's no harm in doing that. So, app alone, we need to change the value because the value they have given is different from this. So, we'll try to change this. Okay. Uh, the app is value is this particular piece of string copy it and then paste it okay this is good now i want to do the authentication maybe i'll copy the, both of them okay and then i'll replace them with this okay browser stack dot key uh, and then the username that's absolutely fine again you can shield your key using uh, some uh, you know encryption but for now let's okay okay and then what else we have uh, these three are done and then we also need to set the device right so maybe i'll copy this i'm not able to copy this will you so google pixel 3 i am not able to copy this okay i think they are having some problem with copying everything okay let me copy this whole stuff So the order doesn't matter guys. So you can add it in any order. Okay. So maybe the test name is, uh, so I'm importing it from lang.reflect. Good. So I think that's all from my side. I can keep the project name as this, or maybe a test Java project, Java Android demo, some some different names. Okay, that's it. I think. Uh, okay, that's okay. Add to a method signature, and then uh, here I also need to configure the URL. That's it. Let's try to run this test and see what's happening.
Okay, now it is taking you to the screen where it is generating all the reports. If you notice it initializing the device, downloading the app, installing the app, setting up the APM, network connection, it's trying to find the element, okay? And then our test also getting, getting passed. So video recording, sometimes, you know, some of the cloud providers like uh, XPR test, C test, they provide video at the, you know, runtime. Okay, you can see the live video, but browser stack takes maybe a couple of uh, 30, you know, couple of minutes or 30 seconds to process them, okay? Let's try to reload it again. And then you are still not processed, let's say, but in the meantime, we can also understand, see, this is the test name that we have given. Uh, this is the project name and then the, you know, all the other stuff, OS, what is the device it ran, you know, all the stuff, whatever the details that you want. And also, if you notice, this is the network logs that is not available in the free plans. You can also see the device log. So maybe you can uh, copy this whole stuff and then paste it here and then see it. Or if you want to see the APM logs, if there is some error, you want to debug it, in normal way, we will uh, use our APM server, but here we have to use uh, this particular endpoint and then you can get it. Okay, why well, it is not displaying? Okay, maybe it's not ready. Let's wait for some time, but uh, it should be ready. I think that's protected. Um... Uh, but it used to work previously. Otherwise you need to use uh, C -Varl. Okay, but. Uh... But I have already logged in, in the other side, right? So it should work. <coughs> so anyways, the videos is now available. So we can also check their view raw logs. I think this is more than enough. Their raw logs, okay? They're, they are telling the session ID on all of the stuff. But yeah, so video is still getting ready. Put capabilities. So these are all the you know stuff that we passed and they have they will assume the remaining things okay yeah so now can view the video so it launched the app and then it clicked on that views okay and then it will take time because we didn't uh, call the quit so it will wait for 60 seconds before closing the session so that is a problem from our side so as soon as we are done we need to always call the driver dot quit Okay, now this is fine. Uh, now you might have a question. Okay, okay, you are telling this. Okay, that's fine. But what is what is the way that I can inspect this? Okay, because they don't seem to have any inspecting options here. How can I inspect the devices that are available in the browser stack? Okay, then you need to use your physical device or your emulator to inspect. No, that's why uh, APM inspector comes handy because previously there was no such options. You have to use your local devices to inspection. But now, if you notice, click on this uh, start inspector session. So we have an option to debug the device that is sitting in browser stack from here. Okay, how we have uh, you know debugged the uh, you know, or we have found the element properties of the device available in our local. Now we also have an option. So, okay, let's go here. There are a lot of cloud providers. Okay, what I am mentioning was Xperia test. I have uh, started my APM learning from the Xperia test. It's a pretty cool tool. Uh, yeah, but I have almost worked on all of these. Uh, Xperia test, you have Sauce Labs. I have worked on Perfecto, P Cloudy. I also worked on Mobile Center. Um, but other stuff I haven't worked with it, but yeah, they are pretty much the same. So let's choose the browser stack and click on okay. Now, if you notice, it is asking, okay, uh, browser stack, okay, in the browser stack, you need to pass the username and the password. Uh, maybe I can fetch it from my, uh, okay, here I can fetch it. Um, And then we also have my mouse is not working properly. Okay, now we have added these two things. Again, we'll see, okay, no proxy needed. And then here you, can, you have to give the desired capabilities that they are telling, okay? So we need to type all of them manually. Okay, I should have typed those manually. Um, let's say I will have this, we'll have this. And here, let's say device, 
is a text and then I need to tell exactly the same thing. Again, uh, little. We can enter in the JSON file. Yeah, we can enter, but JSON file, how can I get it? So let's uh, do it, uh, no worries. 9.0 and then project. Give some project, then build. Build one. Then we also have name. This is not needed. Uh, okay, I actually these things are not needed. OS version, these things are not needed. Maybe the app is pretty important, so I can give the app and then. Uh, give this whole stuff again guys this might get uploaded uh, suppose if you are working on this today tomorrow this uh, app value may get updated it's okay so you need to be very careful okay and then app package okay if i just use app it won't launch the device we'll also check that now first okay i'm just using the app okay let me not use these two things okay let's see how the things behaves Let me, can we uh, can we add a check whether it is installed if installed do this or whether it is not installed do this uh, can yeah, we, yeah we can do that we can do that in the coding we'll do that so let's let's wait for uh, results to come but in the meanwhile i'll do the copy pasting a package and a package. the test is passed okay everyone is doing a lot of changes because previously don't work. Now it is working. Okay. I think it's working. Okay. Previously, it will not work. I don't know. They have updated a lot of stuff. Maybe yeah, I also need to get updated. Yeah, it is working. So that's fine. Uh, it's okay. Then we also don't need to give the app package and app activity and what else we have. Uh, then we'll remove it. I'll give something that is very important. What else? App package, app activity, automation name. We don't need it. Are you, you go inside? I don't know how to give the automation name. Just copy it. And then go here. This is one time effort guys, so you can save it, okay? Automation name is UI Automator 2. What else we have? Uh, the platform name is not important, but yeah, we'll add that as well. Now you can uh, save this as, uh, let's say, uh, browser stack okay save it and then run short session now we are going to inspect that uh, you know device that is sitting in browser stack so you don't need your physical device you don't need your emulators and all so one of us every day can practice with browser stack other cloud providers also have similar properties. Suppose if you have uh, asked to work on Perfecto, that will be simple. So if you notice, it's trying to launch the inspector session now. So this is a device sitting in my, uh, you know, not in my uh, uh, home, it is sitting in browser stack cloud, okay? So you can inspect them the same way how we used to inspect our physical app. That's pretty cool stuff, right? Let's try to use any of these and then we'll also use uh, in a code. Maybe uh, um, let's say I want to uh, print all the elements that are present in this particular page. Uh, anyone wants to try what uh, you know you want to do? Uh, I want to print all the elements that are present in this particular page, the text of all the elements. Anyone? Can you give some experts or anything of that sort? Uh, Amutan. Uh... There is some Android dot widget dot list view. Resource ID is equals to Android ID list. So we should store this element in a list and uh, we can print it. 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, so can you can you try it? Uh, let me open a notepad. I want you guys to try it. Okay, okay. Now tell me what you want to do. Uh, backslash double, yeah. Yeah, double yeah. slash uh, Android dot widget dot text view. Okay. A uh, widget dot list view. Sorry. Okay. Uh, list view. Okay. List view. Uh, bracket uh, at the rate ID equals. Uh, Okay, you have to mention at the rate resource ID. There is no ID. Okay. Okay, resource ID. Resource ID. Resource ID uh, is equals to in uh, colon Android uh, colon ID slash list. Okay. okay. Uh, so first we need to find the count. Okay. With this. After count, we have to loop it with the count and uh, we'll get the. Are you sure this is correct? Okay, uh -huh. let's search. Uh -huh. okay. Let me search using this path. Okay. okay. Click on this, click on search. Okay, this is giving you just one. One element. Okay. Yeah, there is only one list view with the resource okay. idea of Android ID. Just you need to find the child of them. How will you find it? Is anyone else? This is correct until now. Just you need to add one more thing. Android dot widget dot text view i want to find all the childs inside that okay or you can just use single slash more than enough okay now copy this and then search for the elements choose the x path control a control v search it so if you notice it is giving me 12 so there are three six nine and twelve correct so i think we we have found the correct x path okay correct Got it right? Yes, yes, Samathan. So okay. it, it is one load. So in, if I open this, it has 12 elements, okay? I'm using that, um, okay? I'm using that to find it. Again, you can also okay. use a different way. Let's say you are clicking on this. If you notice, the class name is android.widget.text view, okay. okay? Here also the class name is the same, okay? So okay. can we just use that alone? Because I don't see, Anything else is having anti dot widget dot text view. So, but one of the things that we have written so far is correct. So we can also use that, and then uh, we'll try to print all the stuff that is available there. Okay. Okay, and uh, what we can do um, here before clicking on it. Okay, I don't want to click it now. I just want to print all of them. So driver dot find element, and you can use find element by x path and directly give the Xpath string. Okay, I didn't copy it. We will go here, copy this, and I come to IntelliJ, paste it. Okay, now I want to print all of them. Again, you can uh, you can use for each loop, get the web element out of it, and then print it. Again, if you have watched my, uh, you know, uh, sorry guys, you need to use find elements, right? That is very important. Okay, and then you can use stream or parallel stream and then you can also process them parallelly. So what I want to do, I want to get the text out of them. Okay, uh, maybe web element, colon, colon text. And then for each of them, okay. Uh, come on, my keyboard and mouse are causing a lot of problems. Okay, now this is correct. You need to import this, import class, that's it. So now everything is done. So what we are doing is, we have found a list, okay? We have found a list, and then I'm creating a parallel stream, which means all the stuff in the list will be parallelly processed, okay? That's a pretty cool advantage. And what I'm telling, for each of them, okay? This is a method references. Suppose if I have to simplify this, then I can write like uh, for each of the web element that I get, I want to get the text out of it. Okay. Once I get the text out of it, I want to print all the text. Okay. That's what I'm doing. Okay. This is very simple thing. Okay. If I have to even convert this for all the uh, string that I'm getting, I just want to do S out of them. Okay. 
this is your lambda expression but you can also replace see my uh, this is telling please change it to method reference in order to get a better benefit so let me replace them with uh, method reference so please watch my java 8 series guys if you don't understand this okay good or or we have to use android element or web element like earlier we were using android element we'll we'll come to that we'll come to that we are not at there but for now just uh, you know enjoy these stuff we'll come to that soon so now i think uh, th this is a test let's see okay this is the older test it seems okay let's go to the build again and i think it is getting here wait a now it's running just wait for some time so the video will be ready i think you know all the stuff got printed here since this is a parallel stream so the order is not getting printed you know in order so if you use just stream it will be processing those element you know one by one so you will get the same order okay well let's wait for this or in the meantime i'll also run one more test so we'll see the you know order of the you know stuff so basically you know it will generate you the video in some time so you don't worry about it so as long as you can see the values here so if you notice now the order is maintained and then it is printing in the exactly the same order but the processing speed is little slow because we are just using stream but if you use a parallel stream it will pick all the elements one by one if you are not worried about the order uh, you know it will parallelly pick those and then it will try to process them in much faster speed okay that is a cool stuff about using streams okay yeah so basically uh, we have done a lot of things okay to give a summary we have understood what is browser stack how we can do authentication with browser stack how we can uh, find uh, write extra capabilities for browser stack apart from that your code doesn't change the same code whatever you have done is, is it will work on all those places physical device emulator any cloud it will work only thing is the browser browser uh, decide capabilities you need to change okay uh let me uh, open the questions uh, forum for questions we can ask your questions now so this web element how did you use it uh, because everywhere uh, that on uh, someone asked this even i have that doubt on the same okay buddy so let's uh, uh want that to be covered today we'll go that okay let's say um we are we are using something called as android element right yeah here we are telling it is yes, android yes. element so the android driver that you have created uh is actually see very simple guys there is a hierarchy okay uh paint okay let's open a paint uh in in uh, in our normal uh stuff uh, we have a web driver interface correct we we'll normally have a web driver interface you we'll say yes. that you know we'll have a, a remote web driver okay and then uh, a driver and then you also have your classes uh, implementation okay this is your chrome driver opera driver whatever firefox driver whatever so this is basically a hierarchy the same way here also we have some hierarchy okay all these things are at the end will implement your web driver okay that is the root okay so it will still so let's go to the uh, you know code and then we'll see let's say i am clicking on this android driver okay android driver you know in the generic if you notice closely t extends web element so this android driver can hold anything okay the t indicates anything that but that should extend the web element okay it, it the t can be any subclass Uh, are the sub interface or the implementations of the web element interface got it okay so it's very simple and now this android driver is extending your apm driver so apm driver is is a is a 
you can consider it as a super class for your android driver as well as ios driver okay both excel this apm driver okay you got it right yeah yeah so, i got it so so basically android element is you know is a, is, a, is in the last hierarchy of your uh, web element okay mm-hmm. android driver is almost at the last hierarchy of your uh, uh, web driver so let's go to the apm driver class now so if you notice this apm driver is uh, is again uh, storing t extends web element which means apm driver also can hold anything that extends web element and it also extends default generic mobile driver so for mobile driver itself they are having one class okay so let's go to that particular stuff here they are extending the remote web driver so so this default generic mobile driver is extending remote driver so if you go to this okay there is a remote web driver we all know that remote web driver was extended by chrome driver class your firefox driver your opera driver right the same way in the same hierarchy we have one more guy called now one more guy called uh, the default generic mobile driver okay this guy is there okay maybe I'll... this guy is now here okay you can got it right in this and in, inside them they have different guys in uh, apm driver and then inside apm driver you have ios and android driver. okay so this is a hierarchy so if you go to this remote web driver this implements your web driver interface and all other interfaces okay so the, this is a hierarchy guys just try to understand all these things okay pretty simple got it right yeah everyone gets this correct uh, what does that t extends web element mean okay okay now let's uh, that's called as bounded generics uh, i have already covered this in, in my uh, you know java it series if you guys want it i will i will cover that as well okay mm, okay uh, i am just trying to imagine a good example for you guys to give uh, what you can do okay we normally type uh, list right uh list we'll type string okay list equal to new or list okay we'll type like this correct why we are giving string here it's of first uh, we want to store the list of string type list of string type so we want that to be very generic uh, you know that it has to store only Uh, the string type because we don't have to do the uh, casting doing all the you know complex operation and then uh, you know uh, putting ourselves into very big trouble like class cast exception all the stuff i i hope you all know right this is the reason why we are mentioning string suppose for some reason okay i want to control okay that they have to use uh, you know only the okay let's take an example of integer that's more uh, important okay i can give a good example with the integer so now this list can hold only the types of integer now if this particular list guy okay list guy he is just telling e okay it can be e t anything okay that doesn't matter so if it is t or e whatever it is they are telling you can pass anything okay they are not applying any bounded rules but you can also sometime tell okay hey whatever the thing you that you are constructing i want i want you to only use number types okay only numbers okay uh what is happening i want you to store only numbers which means you can store uh, uh integers and then long or uh, double or whatever but it cannot store string okay it cannot store string or it cannot store employee class you guys getting it if you want to apply certain restrictions then while creating class itself they will do that got it okay i would create new class let's say uh, generics again this is not part of my uh, apm close but still uh, someone has asked so generics uh, demo and then uh, let me add a t here okay and then i'll have a method uh, public uh, static uh, void uh print and then accepts the t and then sys out so guys i am still using my eclipse shortcuts here 
and empty. Why this is throwing error? Okay, sorry guys. Okay. Now this is fine. So whatever I'm telling, so if you are creating a class, when creating the class, so tell me the generics that you want to tell. In, the, in a method, what I'm doing, whatever they are passing, I'm just going to print it. That's it. Okay. Now let's take a, a new test class. Okay. Okay. Now, uh, maybe I'll use some pain method here. That's not a problem. Okay. Now what I'm going to do, I have to create an object for this uh, generics demo. So generics demo. Okay. And uh, I have to tell the generics here. I'm telling integer. Okay. Uh, generics demo equal to maybe I can use something like this equal to new generics demo. Okay. Now here, what I can tell generics demo dot uh, print. Okay. It's telling pass the integer. Okay. Now I can tell a four. Okay. Now let's try to run it and see what's happening. Now this is printing me four. That is good. Now I want to convert this to string. Okay. Now here if I go here and then tell four. Okay. This method will still work, right? But I want to do some operation now instead of print. What I want to do this particular generics demo class. Okay. Print print the sum or. Uh, um what i can do i just want to pass only the integer okay i want to apply some restrictions then i can tell t extends number what is yes got that what is this why no not long what is the related okay now it is showing error in the test that's okay so now it is telling error what is telling a hey, parameter string is not within its bound should extend the number so it is clearly telling you have to pass something some class that extends a number class okay so now if i tell integer it will work okay so i can change this to whatever i want now this will not throw any error suppose if i change this to double Okay, uh, 5.00, whatever. So it will work. So this will not throw in here. So we are applying restrictions. That's why we call it as bounded generics. Okay, you can use generics, but we will bound by certain restrictions. Either it can be upper bound or lower bound, but I want to go, I don't want to go there. But for now, just understand they are restricting like this. Okay, in the APM code that we have seen. Okay, if you go to the Android driver class, okay, clearly you can see. They are telling the Android driver can store anything, but the web element, it should be a subclass or implementation of sub interfaces of the web element interface. Okay. So that's how easy it is. They are doing the restrictions there. Nothing more than that. Okay. Got it. Got it, guys. Come on. I need answers. Yes. Yes, yeah, yeah, I got it. yes, yes we got it. So who asked this question? Uh, it's me, Amitabh Sham. So you need to pay 500 rupees extra from. Okay. Okay. No problem. And uh, I think we have completed whatever we want to complete today. Uh, we will uh, try to connect on Tuesday again, and then we'll try to uh, get into the business. Okay. Try to actually find a lot of uh, uh, different locators, how to interact with them. The reason, see, if you notice the gap is now you have uh, Sunday, uh, Monday, and then uh, you have also uh, today, right? So today is uh, Saturday is also you have in time. So please go and explore. You have a free device. Okay. You don't have any restrictions like uh, uh, you have to connect your USB, all those stuff. Please go around and play with it. Okay. I also told you how we can inspect, start an inspector session with the browser stack. Okay. Now with that, you can play around with it and then try to find a lot of uh, things that you can do with this and uh, try to at least make some good test and then let me know how you could uh, explain. You can do, uh, you know, recording sessions. You can do swiping. You can click by using a, uh, uh, x and y axis uh, okay do try all these things okay you have time to try all these things okay now you have everything ready but it's up to you to explore in the in tuesday session we'll we'll go back we'll do a lot of uh, 
uh, gestures we call it as mobile gestures okay swiping tapping you know scrolling all those stuff are called as gestures in uh, in uh, mobile world so we will we'll try to get into deep into that and we'll also see how we can work with a mobile chrome browser okay whatever the application that you want to run you also want to run it on mobile web right we'll also see that how we can do and yeah that's all from my side if you have any questions you can ask me now otherwise uh, Okay, close the session. Yeah, Amutan, one doubt. Like, we can use that uh, Selenium uh, XPath, this thing, like child and uh, functions. Like, can we yeah. use here as well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. The ancestor, sibling, everything yeah. you can use. But the only thing is, you cannot use any methods. Your text is a method. You cannot use it. Okay? Uh, so, okay. those kind of methods, you cannot use it. Oh, okay, okay, okay. It won't work. Or just try it out. Whether it is working or not, just try it out. It's okay. Sure, sure. Good. Uh, anything else? Uh, Amutan, uh, can you go back to our uh, that APM code? Okay. Uh, 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 here, that uh, check thing, uh, how can we add? What whether it is in, uh, if we install, do this. If it is not installed, install and do this. So there, there is a capability called is installed. I don't know, but first it will automatically do it for you, buddy. One thing is first it will check whether the app is installed. If it is uh, not installed, then only it will install. Or if there is an uh, updated version available, then only it will do it. Otherwise it will not okay. do it. So it, by, oh, it default, is, uh, uh, it, uh -huh. by default, it will do it. Okay. Okay, no so need to add in no need to add check in our code right no 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 you do, don't have to add the code checking and all it'll uh, if you go and clearly read the uh, apm uh, server logs it will clearly tell you uh, that you are trying to install an app we found the app already uh, whether checking whether the screen is locked or not okay mm -hmm. check screen is already unlocked no need to unlock all these things will be written in the logs. Please go through them, uh, you know, one by one so that you can get a clear understanding of that. Again, guys, uh, one thing I want to tell, okay, go to this APM uh, GitHub, okay? Their GitHub is having a lot of details, okay? Uh, see, you need to know, right, where I am learning. So I am learning from here, okay? I'm not learning from any other else, okay? I'm learning from these guys, okay? Go to this APM, APM. So the repository, so this is the entire repository that they have, okay, you can go through the docs. If you notice, I have told you what, what is APM uh, UA Automator to server, what is all those things, right? All those things are, you know, I read it from here. Suppose, let's say, um, I spoke about APM Desktop, all I understood from here, APM Inspector, I learned about APM Inspector from here, okay? Uh, let's take um, all those stuff, APM Desktop is here, let's take the whole code. So if you notice, uh, the whole stuff about APM desktop is here. So if you want to work around with it, play around with it, everything I have explored here. Okay. Otherwise, I will not know all these things. Okay. So please try to go through the GitHub repo and then uh, try to get more understanding about it. Okay. Notice they have given all those stuff. Okay. Recorder. Yeah, nobody will teach you recorder because they don't know about all these things. So I, I have learned about them here. Okay, so this recording session, everything I have learned from there, GitHub. So please go through the GitHub file and then uh, read me files. They have a lot of repositories. Okay, go to the one, suppose you want to know about what is UI Automator 2, Amun and having explained properly. Then we we'll go here and then read it. Okay, when I face the issue, see, they, they are telling Java Home, you need to set the Java Home here. All these things I have learned from here. Okay, they are telling, say, you, ha you have to pass the capabilities like this, what this indicates. Okay, everything. Everything you can go and see and learn from here. Okay, please try to spend some time. If you are learning something, learn it well, so that uh, you know you are, you are using it for your lifetime. Don't learn it on a, you know on, on a half cooked way. Okay, so please go through their official documentation. It's always my recommendation. If you don't understand their official documentation, then you can go for some tutorials. Okay, uh, yeah, this is where people, everyone is learning, right? If you see someone, I, I'm creating videos on YouTube, where will I get all the content? I'll get it from their official source. Maybe if something is not missing, then I will try it out. Yeah, you know, understand how this works and then I will put it as a video. That's the only difference, okay? Uh, they, you know, we are not gods or someone, okay? We also learn from these days, okay? Good. Um, let me stop it here. If you have any questions, you can still ask.